Welcome into Cross My Heart Ministry. It is that blessed time of the year, the time of too much to do and not enough time to do it in. It is the blessed Christmas season, the time of the year that we want to love on everybody that loves us. We want to give to everyone who serves us and blesses us. We've got family and friends and neighbors and church staff and just so many people that we want to give a little something to. And we would love for that to be homemade. And there's nothing wrong with doing an out of the box or just buying a box of candy or even just a, a simple card. But sometimes if we're going to an office party or a little get together with our small group, we need to take something. We want to take a, a special, maybe a decadent but delicious dessert that we don't make that often. But we pull out our recipe book and the ones that are really special have about 15 ingredients. And we think, nope, no time for that. And those ones that have three paragraphs for the instructions and you think, oh, all those steps and trying to keep it in order. There's just not time. Well, today I want to share a recipe with you that would be an easy one to make and take. It's super delicious, super easy. It isn't quite so healthy, so it might be one of those where we do just indulge in this time of the year, but that's okay. Before I get to the recipe though, I want to mention something I mentioned uh, in last time's video, and that is about our Write the Word bookmarks for 2023. Now we've done something that we don't normally do, and we have planned out all of next year, and we have all of our bookmarks for every month ready in advance. We know that this resource free every month, and some of you download it regularly every month and, and use it, but we we thought it might be a great idea to offer all of these at once at Christmas. Maybe you would like to get all of these and add a journal and give it to a friend or a child or um, a daughter, um, someone you're mentoring, just a, a girlfriend that you want to encourage that just might need a resource to get into the Word. Add a little day spring journal and give these bookmarks or keep them for yourself. We're making these available absolutely free this month with a contribution of any amount to Cross My Heart Ministry. We'll add some details in the notes below the video that tell you how to do that. You can do it electronically through Zelle. You can mail a check. Any way you want to do it is fine. Uh, I do want to mention that Cross My Heart Ministry is a nonprofit, a 501c3 under the IRS. And so any contributions you make to our ministry are tax deductible. So if you've if you've caught up on your tithe and you've done your other gifts to missionaries on the field and and you're looking for a ministry that you'd just like to do a little extra at Christmas, we would be grateful to have you come alongside us and help underwrite the costs of our ministry. Okay, back to the recipe. The thing that makes this so great is that there are only five ingredients. So it's going to go together quick, but it is wonderful. My recipe is for peanut butter pie. Now, this is my mom's recipe. I've been eating peanut butter pie since I was a little girl, and it's absolutely delicious and oh so easy. The thing that makes it super easy is that it begins with a prepared pie crust, and then there are just four ingredients in the filling. Now, if you listen all the way to the end, of today's video. I've got a special treat for you because I'm going to tell you a West Virginia story about peanut butter pie. Every time pie or especially peanut butter pie comes up in our family at a family get together, this story always comes up. But you got to listen all the way through to hear my story. Okay, back to the recipe. We're beginning with a prepared graham cracker pie crust. I went to Walmart instead of Aldi, and so I picked up a Keebler pie crust. This is a 10-inch graham cracker pie crust. I think some of them are only 8-inch, so I like that this is a little bit bigger. The instructions tell me that it's ready to go, so I didn't need to bake it, but the instructions did offer the option of sort of painting it with a, a uh, whipped up egg, a, a egg and, and I just sort of used my pastry brush and painted the inside to give it a little bit of a glaze. Huh, I just got rid of a few um, graham cracker crumbs and dumped them into my pan I'm going to use to mix. Let me get rid of those. So I went ahead and did that. It has a beautiful sort of glazed look on here now. I'll probably make it hold together nicely. You can use a regular pie crust. It doesn't have to be graham cracker. You can make a homemade graham cracker crust. You can make a homemade pie crust if you want. I like to take those shortcuts, especially this time of the year. The added benefit of buying it this way is that it comes with the disposable pie 
plate. So you can give it and not worry about getting your dish back from whoever you gave it to. So here we go. The other thing is when you get your pie crust, it comes like this, but don't throw this away. I'm sure most of you know this, but this becomes the top. You sort of peel up these edges and then put it down and fold them back over the lip of the, of the topping. And then you've even got a cover to take it. So just can't beat these little prepared pie crusts for a make and take option. Okay, so here we go. This is gonna be super easy. Let me just run down through the list of the ingredients. We're beginning with eight ounces of cream cheese, and I did lay this out and let it just start to get to room temperature so that it would be easy to mix. So this is in here. I'm just gonna open it up, drop it into my mixing bowl trying to get it to fall in without having to touch it, but let me get my handy dandy spatula and persuade it to let go of the foil lining. And because I'm that girl and don't wanna waste a thing, sometimes I behave as if I grew up in the depression, not wanting to let one morsel of anything go. I always rake the top of everything. I'm gonna use my foil here to sort of hold my dirty ingredients. Okay, so we have eight ounces of cream cheese. That's in there. Then the recipe calls for one cup of Cool Whip. And so again, I was at Walmart. I got the Great Value brand, but there are all sorts of versions of this. I've got a one cup measuring cup. This is pretty easy to measure out because it's so soft, but there we go. One cup of Cool Whip. Get all that mixed in there. Okay, two of our four filling ingredients are in here and good to go. Let me set that here, move that back. Next is our peanut butter. Okay, so you can tell we like peanut butter our house, buy it in this big container. So I need one cup of peanut butter. I also like to sort of, I rinse this with water. I have found that it seems that peanut butter is easier to get out of the container when you measure it. If you just rinse it with a little bit of water first. So there's a little handy dandy trick if you want to try it. Let me get another spatula out since I've used both of those and just sort of top this off. I dipped it in, but I need to just top it off and level it off. Peanut butter can be very sticky, of course, but this is the key ingredient. This is the ingredient that gives our delicious pie its name. Gonna rake that off. And I think unlike when we bake, a recipe like this where you're sort of mixing it together is a little forgiving. So if you get a little bit too much of this or not enough of that, it's not like it's soda and salt and sugar and all those things where some of the ingredients in baking are pretty critical to making it work out. So this one can kind of if I'm a little off or a little more, it doesn't really matter that much. Okay, so now we have the peanut butter. I'm gonna set it aside. The last ingredient in our filling is Eagle Brand milk or sweetened condensed milk. I did not buy the Eagle Brand because the store brand worked just as well and it saved me probably 50 cents. So that's how Laura rolls. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this lid off my little pampered chef can opener that I've grown to love. So let me use my little skinny jar cleaner outer here from Pampered Chef as well. And here we go. This stuff is so thick and so delicious. Also use this in my seven layer cookie recipe. I think I did that one for you last year as well. I want the link to that if you would like to check out that recipe. It's another good one for Christmas. That's the only time that I make it. And also another one that's easy to do because everything just gets layered on top. But you're gonna love how easy this is. Let me get all of this, every calorie out of the jar. Squeeze this in here. And ladies, that is all there is to it. It's all in here. I'm gonna move my mess over just a little of all of my leftover spatula and lids. Stick this here with my KitchenAid mixer and 
give it a little mix and it's not going to take long. We're just going to get this all mixed together, pour it into the pan, it will be ready to go. Okay, we're mixing, mixing, mixing away. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. It's starting to get that lovely little brown caramely flavor as the peanut butter gets mixed in with the cream cheese and the Cool Whip. Let me give it a, just stop it for a moment and give it a little stir to pull down everything that is on the sides. I'm gonna have to get it off the stand here to reach the sides. Just sort of scoot all that down. I want all that peanut butter that had risen up there to get mixed in. And we are gonna be good to go very quickly. Did wanna mention that if you do bake your pie crust in advance, you wanna be sure that you allow it to cool completely before you dump your ingredients in because these are all cool ingredients of course cool whip cream cheese and so you want to be sure that you refrigerate this after you prepare it and before you serve it you don't want to make this and then serve it immediately because the ingredients get a little warm but just keep it in the refrigerator it'll sort of set up but you want to put it in a pie crust that's completely cool if you baked it and didn't just use it as it was okay this is good to go we are going to rake off I'm gonna get another new spatula still. Rake the stuff off of my beater here. Again, not wanting to lose any of it. Um, we're gonna take this off the stand. You can sort of see the caramely, the caramely look that the peanut butter gives it as it mix in, mixes in with all the other white ingredients. I'm slinging it and making a mess, but I can clean that up. Just gonna put it all into the pie plate and spread it out and we are going to be finished with our peanut butter pie. Put it in the refrigerator, let it chill for a few minutes. This is an easy one to make the night before or whip, whip up the morning of, but I love how quick and easy it is. And if you love peanut butter, you're just gonna love this recipe and especially how easy it is. Again, a West Virginia favorite at Granny's house. That's what my kids and all of the other grandkids call my mom. She's been making this for years and the kids always love it. In fact, that takes me now to the story that I promised to share with you. And this goes back to the day of when my nephew Drew was a little guy. Now Drew is all grown up with a little guy of his own now. And he is actually an Air Force pilot. We're all so proud of him. I drove over to Oklahoma when he graduated from flight school. But now he's a big grown-up guy. But he'll always be that little guy to me. And this is a story that I remember, a story that always is shared when we talk about pie or when my mom serves peanut butter pie. So here's how it goes. And I hope you think it's as funny as we do. It, it may be one of those family things that doesn't mean as much to everybody else unless you knew the characters. But So Drew's a little guy. He shows up at Granny's house and he comes in with a big grin on his face and I've lost my West Virginia accent but because Drew grew up in West Virginia he sort of kept his all those years but he was a little guy maybe six or seven years old and he says to granny got any pie <laughs> sort of spread out the word pie and she said yes and he said is it peanut butter <laughs> and she said yes and then he said let's cut it <laughs> and so that's often what we say when we get to Granny's house and we've had our Thanksgiving dinner or our big meal together and somebody, predictably, will say, got any pie? Is it peanut butter? And then somebody will say, let's cut it. So there you have it. Probably not as funny to you as it is to all of us in the Adkins family, but I'm sure you have those kind of stories that get passed around down through your family as well. And they just sort of get funnier with the retelling. But anyway, Merry Christmas, friends. I hope the peanut butter pie might be something that you and your family would enjoy. I am going to sprinkle some chocolate chips on top of this just because I think 
make those two great tastes go great together. I think those people at Reese's had it going on when they combined the peanut butter and the chocolate and it just makes it pretty. I'm gonna put the lid on this and then I'm gonna take this out to Camp Salome and share it with the staff there. They are so fabulous to host our ladies Bible study there on the campus every week. It's a beautiful place. If you are plugged into a Bible study, good for you. If you're not, we would love you to join us online or in person. We're studying 1 Corinthians this semester. We're just halfway through and we'll pick back up in January with the second part of the book of 1 Corinthians and would love for you to study along with us. We'll add that link below. You can watch the eight teaching lectures so far and get caught up and then just jump in and start studying with us next semester. Dear ones, Merry Christmas to you and all of the going and doing. I hope that as you do all your Martha tasks, you will make some time to be a Mary and sit at the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is his birthday we're celebrating. I, I want to lean into spinning all the plates and all the doing of Christmas and hug everybody's neck and love on everybody that I love. But I also want to make it a priority to abide with him first, to worship first. And that just seems to flow out and make everything else that I serve up, be served with love and go with worship in my heart, even though my calendar is full and there's a long list and it may not all get done, but by golly, what I do, I hope and pray will be done as unto our Lord Jesus Christ. Merry Christmas to you from all of us here at Cross My Heart Ministry.